Hello and welcome to the TES Secondary Maths Resource of the Week with me Craig Barton. Now one of my obsessions over the course of this current academic year has been about low stakes testing and this has really been inspired by kind of three things. The first was my interview with Dylan William on my Mr Barton Maths podcast and I'm not ashamed to give that a little plug because it is just he comes out with so much gold about assessment for learning and planning and marking and so on so just google Mr Barton Maths podcast you'll, you'll find that but Dylan made the point in that interview that testing is so 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 important I mean there's no better way to find out what kids know or don't know than just kind of getting them on their own doing a doing a test but students inherently don't like being tested and that's often because of the pressure of it because of they think god what's going to happen to my mark and so on and all this so dylan makes the point that low stakes tests are the key tests that the kids just do on a regular basis but which they mark themselves they reflect upon themselves and so on because it's the testing that's the important thing not what happens with the results and so on so that was one thing um, the second was, I'm currently reading um, the Michaela book, um, Tiger Teachers, in fact, look at this, go for that live there, um, and Michaela's full of this as well, this idea of, of low stakes testing, regular testing, and homework is pre preparation for these kind of mini tests and so on, so kids do them on, on a regular weekly or even daily basis. And finally, Joe Morgan, who's a, a blogger I have a tremendous amount of respect for on a Resourceaholic blog, she's been experimenting with this a lot this year with, with her A-level classes, the idea of low stakes testing, and also using my diagnostic questions uh, website, or using the questions from them, to give her Key Stage 3 and 4 students loads of low stake multiple choice testing. So to cut a long story short, <laughs> uh, these low stakes tests are absolutely um, ideal, certainly for me anyway. So I was so, so happy when I stumbled upon uh, these resources on TES because essentially, even though it doesn't use the phrase, they're a collection of low stakes tests. Uh, so there's, there's loads of them in there. It's a zip file all bundled together and I'll just show you the number of them when you get them, if I move uh, out of the way. So there's 18 of them there and they're covering a wide range of topics. And I'll just show you a couple of them because they're ideal as the author says they take 10 minutes so they're perfect to use um, either at the end of a lesson the start of the next lesson and so on just to see what what kids have done and I love this as well I can do this amount of questions uh, confidently I need to work on these questions the teacher doesn't need to mark these that's the important thing if you can get the kids into the mindset that they're doing this test for themselves and so on I know it sounds idealistic but you can get there then it's the kids reflecting on what they can and can't do and so on. And, and it's not taking you any time as a teacher. It's the testing that's the important thing, not what happens with it afterwards. One on expanding and factorizing, just these skill-based things, just to see what the kids can do and what the kids can't do. And finally, one just on negative numbers, ordering negative numbers, adding and subtracting, multiplying and dividing. Now, if you wanted, there's no harm at all, and I think this is a decent idea, that as well as one of these tests, giving the kids um, a kind of more challenging problem solving based question on this particular uh, topic, if you're worried that this is too skill based, absolutely fine as well. I think the key point is that kids get these regularly and they are not a high pressure kind of thing for them. It's not the case of they're gonna be marked, everyone's gonna know they're marked, they're gonna be ranked, parents are gonna be informed and all that kind of stuff. This is testing for the kids to see what they know and what they don't know and so on. I just think that's such a simple but such an important idea. The other thing I'll chuck in, <laughs> honestly, I'm getting obsessed with loads of things this year, is this when you test students. So uh, you'll have heard me bang on about this tons of times. I'm gonna say it again anyway. Personally, I would not give them, so let's take this negative numbers one, I wouldn't give them this right at the end of a lesson on negative numbers. Because how do I know how much of their success is due to what they've remembered versus what they've truly understood? So I'd be tempted, maybe give them it straight at the end of the lesson, but then let's give them this three weeks later or two weeks later or whatever, um, just so we can see how much of they retained. And you don't even, I, I guess if you're giving it them right at the end and then three weeks later, you don't even need to change the numbers or anything like that because they probably won't remember the specifics of it. But regardless of, of whether you give them this low stakes test right at the end of the topic, I'd still be tempted to give it kind of three weeks later if that, if that makes sense, just to really nail down that depth of understanding. 
So, oh, flipping heck, I don't know why I've done that. So yeah, there you go. Low stakes testing, I just thought it was an absolutely wonderful resource. So if you use it, um, hop back on here to say thanks to the author, but also explain how you use it, because I think this is something that kind of all teachers can, can kind of get behind. Anyway, uh, that was it. So hope you found that useful, and I'll return with a fresh resource of the week next week. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.